the way Ayurveda is currently practiced as a starting point. I mean, uh, at least in my presentation, that was what I was uh, emphasizing. But this did not necessarily mean that we would be, you know, defining that uh, authentic Ayurveda with reference to the real life clinical practices. But I think that question I would like to now transfer to Anand. Sure. So these are these are great points, Christian. I mean, I think um, relating to the whole systems, I mean, um, some of you in the audience uh, may not know fully about whole systems. I think Ram talked about it a little bit. But it really, whole systems is an approach that's looking at complexity um, and multiple components and variation over time. And to me, that's the best compromise in terms of research methodologies and that are connecting to Ayurveda, that are reflecting Ayurveda. Um, the contrast would be the RCT drug design where you're taking one pill and they just take that one pill for six months and that's it. Uh, uh, that's not Ayurveda. That's not how Ayurveda is done. And so I agree with you that whole systems, this idea of this complexity and um, uh, individualization, diagnosis, it doesn't always fit with Ayurveda, which is the point you made earlier, but I think it's the best fit uh, that we have. And just from a practical perspective, I think that's the best way forward. Relating to your second question, which is also really spot on, which is that, so what is true Ayurveda? And I, I think we would have great opinions from the audience about this, but to me it is uh, the principles of Ayurveda, you know, is it the, and, and the Ayurvedic worldview. Those are, to me, are the core of what, what is Ayurveda. So, uh, looking at it, uh, our connection to nature is one idea that I always keep in mind. And then secondly, dosha, dhatu, mala, all the core precepts, if those are there, to me that is Ayurveda, whether you're using this herb or that herb or this therapy or that therapy, uh, those are, I think, to me, not as important as the core principles. And so, in research, if we're following the core principles of Ayurveda and and using the Ayurvedic worldview, to me, that's that's Ayurveda, um, and for all practical purposes. Two interesting uh, debates coming up: one on authenticity of Ayurveda, and the other on you know what kind of model Ayurveda can fit in. Yeah, uh, this is regarding uh, the whole system research for Ayurveda, whether it is suitable, it is required, or whether any other, your question again. Since I myself am involved as a principal investigator for a whole system clinical research trial uh, with the bronchial asthma as a model, and as you rightly pointed out, it is not only one medicine for bronchial asthma, or one major shodhana major, or one integrating Pathya, diet, lifestyle, shodhana, and rasayana. It is not like we have made four subsets and like vata pradhan, kapha pradhan, vata dominant balavan, kapha dominant balavan, as it is mentioned in Charak and as we see in our experience in clinical practices, we are trying to evaluate, assess with one primary endpoint. So endpoints are the same. If it is a relief in clinical symptoms, that is one endpoint, or a spirometry, whatever, or we, our endpoint is functional genomics, epigenetic methylation. So if it is pre and post one end, uh, endpoints are defined, and in between we consider as a black box, black box design. We give the entire, the complexity becomes simple. We treat as Ayurveda physician treats in different subsets. That's one black box, and pre and post because the result, what ultimate aim for the physician wants is relief from the symptoms, relief from the disease state, disease free state. So if that is our endpoint and if that is achieved, then that becomes a good research model. And that's how everybody uh, aims at. That is first thing. And this is sort of a black box design, but we end. But the endpoints and assessment criteria, the question comes with the outcome measures acceptable or not, endpoints and uh, outcome measures. That was my first uh, I wanted to share. Then the second thing, what you were telling, the definition of Ayurveda is very loose. I defer to that because, and it is not only what Charak says, what uh, Ayurveda, uh, what uh, other Rishi says, but the definition of Ayurveda is, like if we look at, everybody knows that, Hitahitam, Sukham, Dukham, Ayus, Tasya, Hitahitam. And very rightly pointed out, it's a research question. 
मानम चे तच्चे यत्रोक्तम आयुर्वेद हा उच्चते दैट इज अ स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ मान इज अ स्टैंडर्ड सो स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ हित आयु स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ अहित आयु स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ सुख आयु एंड दुख आयु सो दीज स्टैंडर्ड्स हैव बीन इवॉल्व्ड इट इज अ सायंस वेयर स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ बेनिफिशियल स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ हेल्थ एंड स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ हैप्पीनेस आर मेंशन इट इज अ आयुर्वेद एंड इट इज व्हेन यू से दैट this this is called as it has come from the god but it is a wrong connotation because ayurved itself even though it is eternal but this is a process of evolution is totally dynamic principles and theory of ayurved are eternal if when we when we say that sweet taste increases kapha anything in this world which has a sweet taste will increase kapha even if it is in Europe, in Australia, Africa, or in India, but the practices are different. And what should be our research question is to develop a standardized practices. We cannot mimic the same practices which are prevalent in India, but the research based on our principle and theory, the practices, standard treatment protocol for burnouts, standard treatment protocol for different diseases. so this standardization developing standards for uh, dietetic standards for plants standards for diagnostics and standard for treatment that should be the focus and this process is a dynamic based on the the standards developing the standards can be a research question in our object thank you i just want to mention that you see if we want to say what is ayurveda what is true ayurveda i would say from a historical point of view it is really a long tradition and also a very diverse tradition it's al already in the classics you have these discussion on, on certain points so it's the same you see i'm i'm coming also from the field of comparative religion we cannot say what is true religion or what is true hinduism it, it is not possible to answer this question uh because we have this diversity and we have to accept diversity so therefore i think if we want to do empirical research we always have to ask uh, in front and therefore uh, your lecture was so interesting before we uh, look after treating cancer we have to look after what is meant by it in ayurvedic tradition like that so um i think uh, we should be very careful also in the study design yes if we mix different herbs from different regions or something like that we can say okay it's according to the criteria but in fact you see the the single traditions in the in ayurvedic uh, um, uh, cure uh, have developed their own context so if we have a special treatment in one region or in one tradition following vagbata or some other authors from the tradition we we should also ask for you see how, what is the context of this treatment in one tradition of ayurveda so it, it's really it gets more complicated but nevertheless we have to be very careful in uh, designing a study in order to get good results but i think if we have a healthy system of dialogue you know of more participation i think i like your idea that you know why don't we evolve the whole system research model i think that would that that's where we can stop now because if there is a even in our research design this is one thing we were not involved actually in the designing uh, part but if the ayurvedic community can also participate in we are only uh, a bit apprehensive about you know a design being developed and then force fitted on us if we can also evolve i think then it can become more accommodative and i think that's a direction probably we should take so uh, i want to tell a, a, a different idea the life <coughs> life itself it is ayurveda it is the knowledge of consciousness whatever we are doing in any way it is ayurveda ayurveda is not only for india it is for all universe and also ayurveda also allowed to come into a new idea if there is a, a new idea we can uh, insert into ayurveda and also if there is any idea it's not fit at the 
uh, the situation, the new modern world, also we can keep it away also. So, uh, and uh, we have to understand there are nidya and anidya. There is something unchangeable, there is something changeable. There is philosophy, there is principles, there is practicals. Of course the practicals can change according to the uh, time and the place. But the philosophy and the principles, it's better to we follow that. Following the principles, we can change the practicals. Thank you. It's really quite difficult to define what Ayurveda is, and I think we need to have more dialogues and discussions. All these viewpoints need to be brought out and brainstormed. So I, I didn't get a chance to present the study that's ongoing. That's the second step. This is step one, and now this is step two, which is to actually take an Ayurvedic intervention and give it to patients. And in that intervention, we're doing yoga, uh, pranayam, um, uh, meditation, and also marma. So these are all uh, mind-body therapy. So again, uh, treating mind and body, actually. So so that's that's there. And and as you probably know, there's a lot of research in on uh, yoga, different aspects of yoga, uh, mostly asana pranayam, uh, for different conditions. So I think that's happening also. This is a problem in, in Ayurveda also. We have, you know, Yukti Vyapasraya, Deva Vyapasraya, Sattva Vajaya. And we also find, as Dr. Ramesh said, that in actual practice, this is why I'm a bit worried about the whole system approach, because Ayurveda is practiced also in a, a variety of ways. Sometimes even a single herb, and there's no whole system component to it at all. So what Ayurveda talks about is appropriateness in that context. It's not that in the name of whole system you have to bring mind, spirit, everything together. It's, you know, responding to the situation as it demands. So, so those things, at what level do we need to bring in all these things? This was the problem with our trial also. In some diseases you need a more somatic approach. In some other diseases you may need so even in our treatment, that was one problem I posed, that when we go for a larger study with including inpatients, and then our RCT design kind of crumbles. I mean, the whole treatment becomes much more complex. We will need to address these at another level. As of now, I don't have the solutions. I do not know how such a complex Ayurvedic intervention could be, you know, also evaluated uh, scientifically in a rigorous way. Uh, at this point, I don't have the answers. So, if there are no more questions, yes. I just uh, want to make two comments. First, to the discussion uh, earlier, so about excluding and including, and I think that uh, if both sides are open, uh, because in our department we go together to the visit, and we basically discuss on a daily basis the allopathic and the Ayurvedic approach for each uh, patient, and from this, there's a very, very nourishing discussion where, where, where we just adopt and uh, just create an, a new thinking, maybe, in future time. That's uh, one point. And the other thing uh, was that also yoga, uh, for us in the clinic, it's also a basic uh, part of the daily treatment. So actually, we have uh, two yoga classes and to, to adopt it. And hopefully, we will also adopt it for this Rasayana research. Thank you very much for the product.